Good morning, everyone, and good evening to our friends in Asia. Welcome to Giant Group's global headquarters here in Taiwan. My name is Eric Clem, and I'll be your host for this Facebook launch event. I'm also the design manager for our cycling innovation group here in Taichung. Recently, Giant launched the ninth generation of its iconic TCR road bike series. Today, we're providing you with the opportunity to meet the designers and engineers that help bring this project to life. We'll be discussing design details, engineering targets, colorways, and overall details that make up this new series. Before we meet the team, please check out this TCR launch video. The spark that ignited a revolution. With its radical compact road geometry, the TCR changed race bikes forever. Innovation, it's in this bike's DNA. Racing, testing, pushing limits. These are the same reasons you ride, to feel the rush, to be faster, to win. TCR has always been about pursuing perfection and reshaping the future, your future. Unleash your full potential with the most efficient and aerodynamic TCR ever. This is the new TCR. This is the total race bike. Let's meet the team responsible for this new TCR. Hey, Sophia. Hi. Sophia, you are the lead engineer for this new TCR series. Mm -hmm. And this is a legendary bike with a long legacy of providing outstanding efficiency to the rider. What were some of the main goals you strived for during this process? TCR is an everyday race bike. Efficiency is definitely the key to success. Mm -hmm. And even though we already had a great uh, riding performance of current TCR, we still improved the overall efficiency of the new TCR by applying aerodynamic. At the same time, we keep the class leading stiffness to work, uh, weight ratio. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of things to think about, a lot of things to combine. What was the biggest challenge you encountered during this process? Mm, well, I think the biggest challenge was how to balance aerodynamic, stiffness, and lightweight. Mm. We had uh, aero experts in charge of dragon researches. Right. And at the same time, carbon technology plays a big role for new TCR. Mm. We reduced the weight, but without sacrificing stiffness. Mm. So uh, carbon technology, we use the latest carbon layups and also advanced materials. Mm -hmm. At the same time, we also upgraded the four new carbon carpets. Mm -hmm. So in overall, it's a teamwork. We have aero experts, engineers, and aesthetic designers. Mm -hmm. We all work together to make this terrific new TCR. Awesome, a lot of great things coming together. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. BK. Hi, Eric. BK, you were the lead industrial designer on this project, and that meant combining quite a few things. You had to think about design language, aerodynamics, engineering input. How did you bring these all together, and what did you focus on along the way? Uh, from the TCR DNA, uh, this is the beauty of the foam follow function. Mm. So this just, just like uh, F1, mm. uh, use the minimum weight and makes the maximum power. Got it. So on the overall shape, it's very clean and very uh, minimum, mm -hmm. but it's still powerful. Mm -hmm. So the important DNA is a, is a compact role mm -hmm. for TCR. Mm -hmm. So we try to keep the, the, the very fluent uh, top two to six stay mm -hmm. line mm -hmm. to make this one very, very uh, sexy. Mm -hmm. Definitely, it's really nice to keep that continuity going between those two tubes. Now, we have a new design language that we recently launched called Tensio, and it does appear on this bike as well. There's a few key feature lines which really help the dynamic nature of this bike. Where are those on the frame? Uh, on the top two, we had a very aggressive and a muscle killer line, the Tensio line here, and also on the stand and the down tube. Mm. This is a very powerful and the dynamic presence. Great. Now, aerodynamics was a new thing we considered for this TCR, and there were several tube shapes you had to refine along the way. Where did those appear on this new frame? Uh, in the past, uh, we just used the uh, older TCR. We used the tier shape 
on the on the head tube strip, mm -hmm. and then now we use the uh, truncated uh, eclipse strip. So right. this one is more aero and also can keep the good steamness. Right. So you also can see this strip on the fork design. Mm -hmm. It's still very powerful and uh, very aero. Definitely. So still keeping that strong characteristic, but adding some small aerodynamics along the way. Yeah. Now the final section I know you were really concentrating on was the down tube. Yeah. TCR was always known for that very powerful, stiff, boxy down tube. It's still in place here, but there were some refinements that you made. How did it change along the way? Uh, in the past, uh, we focused on the climbing strip. So this is square strip is uh, very good for climbing, but yep. it's not aero enough. Mm. So we try to make this one more aero and then still keep the very, very wide strip and then make this one very stiff. Right. So right. this is an amazing uh, combination mm. for, for, this, uh, for this balance. Definitely. It's great. A lot of design characteristics coming together, but I think the overall package is really something special in the end. Thank you. Bye. Hey, James. Hi. James, you were part of the engineering team, and you did a lot of material testing on this new bike. Now, we know carbon fiber appears on the TCR frame set for the overall performance of it. Does it appear in other areas on this new bike? Yes. We have our own new carbon copy for TCR. The overall is lighter and the stiff. And for the stand, the, we improve the cross-section uh, length and the wide ratio to, to decrease the torsion deformation. It boosts the stiff or stand. For the bar, we increase the drop stiffness for battery handling in spring. Mm. So overall summary for the cockpit, we were able to lower the weight, increase the stiffness, but I think there's also something you focused on for ergonomics of this new handlebar. Yeah, we also focus on uh, ergonomic research. We have a new shape on the top of handlebar. This is a uh, oval shape. It's, it can is straight of hand in riding. Mm, great. So keeping the same performance as before, the lightweight, the stiffness, but adding a new feature of comfort to this handlebar. Yes, uh, we, I suggest everyone can try it, can feel it. Great, great improvements. Thanks, yeah. James. This is the color and graphic room of our design studio. Hey, Alan. Hey, Eric. Alan, you were responsible for much of the color and graphic development for this new TCR series. It's very clear that we've seen a vast improvement for a lot of Giant products, but especially TCR in this new generation. What were some of the things you focused on along the way, and how did you go about this design process? Okay, for color and graphics, we are always studying in trend and getting inspiration from other industries, mm. like you see the wall behind me. This is the model year 21 color palette for Giant and we have uh, new color options mm. and we have some uh, nice textures and many interesting color combinations here. Yeah, nice stuff. Yeah, and for, we are uh, constantly experimenting with new technology, materials and colors mm. to improve the outlook. Mm. And uh, for TCR, we really want to upgrade the aesthetic uh, making it uh, visually stunning, yet mm. clean and sophisticated. Mm, great, yeah. Yeah, for um, chameleon colors, and the gradient faders. Chameleon obviously changing color as it falls into different sunlight and the gradient fade, really mixing some rich metallics together into one package. Yes, and also deep metallic mm. and the mixed finish was something we use, uh, apply on mm. new TCR. Yeah, it's really nice stuff. A lot of new decal technologies, a lot of new rich pigments of paint that you've been thinking of for this new TCR. Out of all these that you worked on this year, is there one particular favorite that you have? Yeah, one of my favorite is this one. Yeah, it named uh, Ice Field. Sometimes you, we also learn from nature. It have a uh, nice, beautiful two-tone colors from the light blue to the deeper metallic, mm. and there's uh, some nice detail on the top tube and fork, and uh, yeah, I really like this. Very impactful design that I'm sure will appeal to many riders of TCR. Mm -hmm. Great, excellent stuff, Alan. Thank yeah. you. Thanks.
For more than two decades, one race bike has continually pushed the limits of performance. So when it came time to create the next generation TCR, the challenge was clear. Make it even more efficient with breakthrough aerodynamics. Lighter, faster, more speed with every pedal stroke. And it all led to this, the all new TCR. From the start of this project, we focused on three key performance factors, class-leading efficiency, advanced aerodynamics, and total control. First, we focused on efficiency, an unrivaled stiffness-to-weight ratio is a hallmark of the TCR. This new model builds on that by using new professional-grade composite materials, re-engineered tubing shapes, and cutting-edge manufacturing techniques. To make up for added mass in areas of the frame that have been modified for aerodynamic improvements, we had to find new ways to reduce weight in other areas. We invested in a new robotic assembly process that allows ultra-precise placement of 150 smaller composite swatches per frame set. And while previous TCR frames were assembled using machine-stamped composite swatches, we now use new laser technology to produce more precise cuts. These smaller, more precise swatches, combined with robotic layup, result in a lighter overall frame weight. It's the combination of greater stiffness and less weight that gives this bike its class-leading efficiency. Second, the new TCR also takes a major leap forward into aero performance. We used CFD and dynamic wind tunnel testing to create new airfoil sections with a truncated ellipse shape. Every tube shape was analyzed, engineered, and tested to produce an overall structure with significantly lower drag. In the end, we were able to create the most aerodynamic bicycle in its class. The third performance factor of the TCR, following efficiency and aerodynamics, is control. The new frame is integrated with flat mount disc brake technology for consistent braking power in all conditions. A new composite fork provides greater torsional stiffness, and a new aero-engineered contact SLR composite handlebar and stem deliver pinpoint steering precision. Lastly, Added frame and fork clearance lets you run larger tires, up to 32 millimeters, for a smoother, faster ride quality. Final approval comes from the riders who rely on this bike day in and day out. Prototypes have been ridden, tested, and raced over thousands of kilometers at the highest levels of the sport. Updated and improved in all aspects of road racing performance, the all-new TCR is the total race bike. A legend reborn. Welcome to the TCR showroom in our new giant headquarters. Everyone watching has had the chance to see our new development video of TCR, and you've also had the opportunity to meet the designers and engineers that helped make this new project a reality. We're here with many models that make up the TCR lineup, and we'd like to talk through some of the characteristics, feelings, and overall design elements that make up this new TCR road bike. So to join me for this discussion, I have Brandon. He's part of our global marketing team. Brandon, you were essential in coming up with a plan to launch this new TCR, but you've also spent quite a bit of time riding it as well. Yeah. Maybe you could take us through some of the main points that stood out to you for, um, for performance on this new TCR. Yeah, thanks Eric, thanks for inviting me. Um, I have a few things I wanted to share with all, all you. The first one I'd like to say is climbing. Mm. Mm, too, thin, too many things to say, but uh, in short, uh, I think this bike, I feel it rides just my current TCR ISP mm. uh, rim, rim brake version. Yeah. Uh, because it's so lightweight and so high stiffness. So I pedal it and, and just go out 
Um, it's so responsive, uh, and uh, for me personally, I I never thought a uh, disc brake bike like this one can be such a lively ride. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's key to note that the stiffness to weight ratio of this bike is awesome. Yes. And the complete build of this particular bike with hydraulic disc brake, with not necessarily like a weight weenie build, is still 6.5 kilograms in medium, which is awesome for a full disc brake bike. Yeah. Um, you mentioned efficiency in climbing, and I think one of those points that's important to note on all our TCRs, whether it's disc brake, rim brake, we still keep a very short 405 millimeter length chainstay. And I think that's something you could definitely feel in your riding. Yeah, definitely things to share. Uh, you know, I, I would ride uh, with my, um, my club friends mm -hmm. for my interval training. So. They are very strong and fast, so we will catch up with each other and they compete with each other. Yeah. It's a beautiful moment, especially you know we climb on hilly, mm -hmm. hilly station, and the next is the, the flat station. Mm -hmm. So in that moment, we start to catch up mm -hmm. and then start to chasing up. In that moment, I feel this bike can really get our speed very quickly and they help me to go back to the high speed cruising easily. Right, I think that definitely speaks to the agility and the snappiness that I think every performance rider is looking for in yes. a bike like this. So in our discussion before, you also mentioned something about handling, where you felt that this was quite a step up from even our current uh, TCR in terms of front end stiffness and handling. Yeah, the few things I feel very strong from our handling is, as you know, in our new headquarters, we have a lot of the challenging routes uh, nearby us. Mm -hmm. So I have a, a lot of chance and opportunity to test ride this bike on those technical uh, climbing and descending. Yeah. And I feel this bike is, is, is a, how to say, is a confident boost. Confidence inspiring, yeah, line. Confident. yeah. So um, it's just like you, you points to uh, and it goes where mm. you want immediately. Yeah. And especially when I know I, I lead on my body on the bike in the sharp corners. Yeah. The bike just like have something strong hold me layers mm. and encourage me to go fast, go fast. Yeah. So although I'm not very skilled in the descending, but with this bike, I'd like to, to try and push, uh, push my limit more. Yeah. And I think that front end stiffness, the overall rethinking of the fork was a key target for the engineering team. So when, it, when everyone looks at this fork, you can see that the fork crown is quite a bit wider than before, yes. which definitely equates mm -hmm. to a greater stiffness. And also, as mentioned previously from BK doing the design, that truncated ellipse section on the fork legs uh, adds to that overall element. Now, the fork legs are bowed out a little bit, and that is a byproduct of that uh, fork crown being a little bit wider. But in essence, that does allow a little bit of cleaner air to pass through between the wheel and the fork leg. So two elements sort of coming together there, the front end stiffness um, and the arrow. And that was definitely one of the key feedbacks that we got from our CCC team. Greg Van Avermaet saying that the first time he rode it, wow, the front end stiffness is even greater than the current TCR. And already that was, that was pretty stiff. So I think that was a, a, a great crowning moment in achievement for the front end of this bike. Yes, I'd like to say this is something the future not only the pro level rider can feel, but uh, the, you know, the every rider, no rider like me can really feel the difference so significantly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. So another factor you wanted to touch on was overall fit. Yeah. We have a new cockpit, we have some other new pieces. What are some of those that stood out for you uh, in your riding so far? Yeah, I want to say that I really appreciate the new shape of the new handlebar. Mm. Uh, because when I, I was remember clear when I was struggling with my sweating face, heavy breathing in the, in the hard climbs, very steep, the uh, ten percent to twenty percent, I, I believe. I I'd, I'd really sense that I have this kind of things that I can hold my hand uh, with uh, comfy and the rest a little bit. Yeah, uh, I'd like to say it really saved my day somehow. Yeah. It's a small detail to note, um, but before James mentioned that the overall cockpit is stiffer and lighter than before when we think of the, the bar and the stem combined. But little touch points like ergonomics, just extending this section just that little bit is very important because you and I both know if you're stuck on a climb for a while, if you're riding on the tops for extended yeah. periods, you want that little bit more comfort. If it can save that little bit of, of hand feel, you're going to be... Um, uh, more performance oriented in the Yes, long run. for me, it's just like it to helping me to recover my energy back yeah. a little bit more. Definitely. Yeah. And another point? Another point I want to share is about the saddles. Now, this is all about a touch point, but this saddle for me 
the shepherd is good. I can easily find, find out my sweet point on this new setup for my sit bone. And the, another bad thing is it never you know, interfere my inner of the legs. Yeah. So I can pattern out the what I need yeah. uh, every time I want. Yeah, I think it's important to note that on this whole new TCR series, whether it's Advanced SL, Advanced Pro, Advanced, we have a whole new line of saddles called Fleet. So we offer it with both carbon rails, uh, aluminum rails, and then we have an approach saddle for advanced level. So really rethinking the overall saddle approach, a little bit wider, uh, hopefully appealing to a greater realm of riders and customers. A very big cutout in the middle, allowing a lot of soft tissue to be pressure free. Yeah. And I think one important note for all these components and these fit pieces is the overall aesthetic. Uh, for the saddle itself, a very nice matte texture with gloss on top and the saddle and bar too. Really not drawing too much attention to it, really just showcasing the carbon quality of it. A very flat section back here, which transfers very nicely to the form of the head tube. New spacers as well. So I think if someone were to look at this bike and look at a model year 20 or the previous generation TCR in a shop, you would see a lot of those aesthetic details were cleaned up. Yes. And it, I think it really goes a long way in the overall. Yeah, for me it's not only look macho, look mm. very strong, but uh, for me, all the touch points I get the improvements. Yeah. And the low, you know, subtle, the shape change really created a lot and the huge fit improvements. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, and I think a, another small detail to note, I think a lot of people have seen the overall numbers of this frame, the great weight decrease. Yeah. But one small part that has actually decreased a lot in weight is this ISP clamp. Now, you and I both know, like, we have advanced SL models. You cut off the top based on your saddle height and you put that part on. In the past, sometimes you'd feel guilty about putting a lot of weight on top here. Yeah. But due to uh, some carbon bits on top, we've been able to shed 10 grams off this part. Mm. Small amount, but when we're counting grams on some a, a performance bike like this, that's, that's a pretty important part. Yeah, you bring me to, I, I remember a lot of meeting. When I joined the meeting, I was, we spent tons of hours to, to discover the whole new design mm. of uh, this. I see clamp and uh, how, to, how to ease and measure the carbon fiber material can really work on this areas. Yeah. I, I just, in that moment, I just said, what? We spent so many hours to discuss this small part. But in the end, I'd like to say, it's all the small things to achieve this bike. Definitely. Yeah. Small details, I think, can go a long way for the yeah. appreciation of, that, that was put into yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So colorways, we're standing in front of a few different models for different levels. The colorway on this Advanced SL Zero, we call it thin line painting. Mm -hmm. So pretty cool. I think it's something that you and I both like. You could see the texture of the carbon. It's kind of rare for Giant to do a full carbon um, visible frame. It's very hard to do with manufacturing, but this not only saves quite a bit of weight, we're just putting a matte clear coat on, but I think you can really see and appreciate all the construction that went into a frame like this. Yes. Uh, I'm the techie guy, so I lo really love the carbon texture it shows. For me, it's really sexy. Yeah. And uh, because we're just nearby our factory, so when I move into our factory, I say, oh, how much ever you have done on this bike? It's hand handmade selection, one by one, right, and to right. make it happen. Definitely. Yeah. So besides the full naked carbon thin line painting, yeah. we also have a lot of dazzling colors in the rest of the range. And we saw before Alan showing some color tubes based on chameleon, metallics, and this is a great example. I believe it's an advanced SL1, but we really showcase fading color, metallics, and different finishes overall. Yeah. Uh, one thing we've noticed too over time, not all consumers want to shout the brand name. You, you want to be, you want to embody your brand, you want to be part of it, but on a case like this, Giant is fully visible, and we've actually added a lot of techiness with the matte finishes against the gloss. So everything is there, but we really showcase the overall industrial design, and the paint helps to highlight that. Yeah, so, uh, to be honest, uh, when I first saw this uh, car and graphic and in your room, I thought, wow, it's just something from the car industry. Definitely, yeah. a lot of inspiration from the car industry and yeah. just looking for that right pigment and paint. To yeah, match. it's a very high quality texture for me personally. Yeah. Yeah. So speaking of paint and details, let's check out this Advanced Pro model over sure. here. So as most of our consumers know, we offer Advanced SL, Advanced Pro, and Advanced. So similar to that uh, ISP clamp detail we talked about, the engineers and designers also rethought the integrated seat mast clamp mm -hmm. on this top tube. 
So this is something that we do utilize on our defies, on our propels, but this is 10 grams weight savings here. That's, that's a fair amount. Yes. And uh, for me, I, I think the whole uh, current graphic and the whole setting on this bike, it's just day in and day out, very practical machine, a beautiful beast. This is a good example of a new color we have for this year called Rosewood. Yeah. So it's Rosewood fading to our carbon smoke, which has a little bit of carbon visible, but a little bit of, um, a little bit of black paint mixed in. But I think one of the things we stressed on this year TCR is to just elevate the overall look. More yeah. sophisticated um, and just bold colors but speaking to that elegance that we want TCR to become. I think the consumer will be very happy to know that, uh, how much effort you have done on this bike. Yeah. Yeah. And I think one more detail also on the Advanced Pro. Uh, you spoke to the fit and the cockpit on the Advanced SL. On Advanced Pro also, we have all new aluminum stem, all new aluminum bar, and this does share the shaping with the carbon bar. Yeah, so uh, this kind, uh, this uh, aluminum bar also share the ergonomic fit, just like our carbon version. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's quite, it's quite good. Quite good news for the consumer who have a uh, aluminum bar. You also have the same kind of, a, you know, a very good touch point. Definitely. Yeah. And even the spacers on here, when everyone checks it out, you know, a nice transition into the top tube, um, very form fitting, just like the carbon one. So you have a, more of a continuous shape going up to the stem. Elegant. So let's check out one more TCR Advanced over here. Check yeah. out one more colorway and some more details. I think one of the, the cool things about this new range is all the designers really paid attention to every single level of TCR. We're not just giving all attention to the Advanced to sell, but everything below as well. So this is a great example. This is a new color called Concrete, a very opaque white that especially when you get outside, has almost like a flickering effect between an off-white and a sort of um, matte gray. And one of the de decals on this uses our chameleon color code. So that's something we kind of kept for paint before, and now we're putting it on the decals. So when the right light shines upon it, you can actually see a nice color shift happening just in that small section of font on the down tube, top tube, and head tube. Yes, just like what you say, it's really a lot of uh, detail just hidden in this painting, so, but uh, I, I do think that, again, consumer will really appreciate uh, all, all the facts from your team, even this, this kind of the bike is not quite as high end as our advanced SL uh, model, but uh, you still put tons of the effort to make this bike cool. We do hope that every level can definitely speak to that consumer, no matter price point or what they're looking for. And this is a good example, too, where this is the new approach saddle. Yeah. And like you pointed out, very similar to the fleet in shaping. Um, handlebar, blacked out cockpit, something that's very fitting for a performance bike like this. Yes. And Eric, it's time, I think it is time, because we have a t lots of questions from the internet uh, uh, friends. It's time limit, so we only have the top two questions. Okay. A lot of people ask. Let me ask you, hmm, the first one is, the previous and the new TCR uh, generation looks very similar. Mm. Why does it exactly change your made? Yeah, at a quick glance, I'll admit, um, if you're just sweeping by, it, it might look very similar to the old one. But there's a few key areas that consumers can look for that not only visually, but also beneficial to the overall performance of the bike. Some of these were mentioned earlier by, by BK uh, in the design section. The down tube itself. The down tube of TCR has always been very boxy the past couple generations. We weren't really looking at aerodynamics at all. This one is actually wider than before. It's a little bit flatter than before. And the bottom section is curved slightly. Um, a little bit of watt saved for aerodynamics. But I think if consumers come up, grab that tube, you'll notice a clear difference to what was happening before. The fork itself, we talked about the performance gains there. But visually also, with the truncated ellipse sections, it's very different when you actually see it in person and if you were holding previous generation fork yeah. in this one. And another area I would say is the area behind the head tube here. Before it was a bit more of a, uh, an angle coming down, transitioning from top tube to head tube. Now it's a bit more sliced off and that flat section does provide some benefit for aero. A little bit, but it does create a much more cleaner airflow on the trailing edge when the airflow comes around it. Yeah, so uh, all your talks just remind me that all the development meeting we, we have attended. Mm -hmm. 
the, the word come to mind is balance. Yeah. Because you guys really wanted to balance the lightweight, stiffness, aerodynamic, uh, and uh, it's elegant designs to put all the things together. So I'd like to say that every shape, every detail on this bike have the reason behind. Definitely. We wanted to stay true to that TCR Total Compact Road DNA. So a very nice silhouette that's, that pays homage to the earlier TCRs before it. But obviously there's a lot of sections, a lot of details that we wanted to invest time in. But I think when everyone checks out this bike up close and hopefully has a chance to ride it, they can appreciate those details that were changed. Yeah, but I, I believe one thing we don't change is total compare road. Definitely. Definitely. Okay, let's move on to the second question. Hmm. Why there is no integrated cable routing? Very good questions. Yeah, that's a very, very contentious point. Yeah. Uh, a lot of bikes that we've seen recently do have full internal cable routing, and that's yeah. something we've done on some of our other bikes, like Propel and Defy. For TCR, we wanted to focus on two things, lightweight and also maintenance, inclusivity, and the ability for the user to swap out different components, whether it's a different length stem, different length bars. When you do have full in internal cable routing, it looks great for a photo. I'll, I'll definitely admit that from a design standpoint. But for someone building the bike, for the retail shop putting it together, for the rider that wants to try different length stem or different bars or change out components, it becomes a very cumbersome uh, maintenance job to do. So we really wanted to appeal to the, the, the person that wants the ability to swap out those components, but also favors lightweight uh, over integration. So that's really what we strive for on TCR. Yes, this is something I agree with you very much because you know, I always have the, the kid issue, mm -hmm. and uh, recently I changed my training course uh, after discussion with my coach, so I needed to, to change a few of the, my bike setting. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm glad that I can change all my setting and uh, with my feeder within just one hour. For sure. Yeah, for it's sure. It's a much easier job. <laughs> yeah, so thanks, Eric. I think it's- uh, No, thank you. Yeah, to the question. Great. So we just want to say thanks to everyone for tuning in. We hope this was a super informative session on the new TCR. And we invite everyone to check out our website and all resources and content around for all the details surrounding this new product. And if you do have a chance to visit your local retailer to set up a test ride or even just check out the bike up close, we definitely invite you to do so. So thanks again for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. See you.